I have a ton of questions for you guys, but one of the things is I've been waiting for something National Treasure since the second movie, and I'm sort of curious for you guys on the end, um, how talk a little bit about how it ended up being a series at Disney Plus, and um, you know, was it hard to pull off, like I mean, in terms of getting the studio on board? Yeah, I mean, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got a call uh, from the studio asking. Um, I think they asked Jerry to do the series, and uh, we, luckily Jerry uh, thought about us. Um, so it's always been like for us to blow. They they wanted it to be good, and Marianne and I, you know, hopefully they like this, and hopefully they like that, and and we've gotten it to this this level. We've always we've always wanted to make the the third movie but until then we had always thought about doing tv so we always thought it would we could do a spinoff in a in a television universe and so we're very lucky that disney plus had us do it how many episodes is the series 10 <laughs> so i'm right i'm so i'm curious for the cast um Obviously, uh, how what are you actually most excited for fans to see in the series? And um, I guess let me start with that. Um, well, I would say that uh, the treasure that we follow and uncovering all of the mysteries um, that we have on the show, each episode kind of leads into the next. Um, so, you know, I think parts of the, the treasure were mentioned in the second film and i don't know if i can say that but it's like part of the pan american treasure because it was introduced then so it's a continuation of the original uh movies only 20 years later and so we go off of that adventure yeah i'm excited for people to see how much we've really expanded the world because Mm -hmm. if you liked the first two movies we're essentially giving you 10 mini movies so this still has the same spirit of that amazing action that you get from the movies. We deliver a huge set piece in every single episode, but because we have 10 hours, we can give you the action, but also really get into the character study of all these people. So you really fall in love with them even more on the journey. And at the end of the day, I think people are just gonna have fun watching it. It's an hour of escapist television, kick back with your family. It's just gonna be a good time for everyone. I was uh, I was gonna say, I think it also shines a light on um uh, the parallel to the excitement of treasure hunting, it also shows the dangers of treasure hunting in a very deep way. Um, my character, Liam Sadusky, is the grandson of Peter Sadusky, who was the head FBI agent on the original two movies, Following the Case. And you see through Liam the damage that can be done from treasure hunting. I feel like the first two movies showed the dangers, but um, he is a byproduct of the aftermath of that lifestyle. And I think it'll show audiences a different side to it as well. We just put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this one. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. And, 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 you know, the chemistry that we all have on screen is, like, in real life. So to follow a young group of people and to follow the perspective of Jess, who's uh, with DACA and is an immigrant and just dreams to be uh, a citizen and in the FBI, it's just a really great new, fresh take on the series in the world. So it's 10 episodes. Uh, I'm curious for each of you, do you have a favorite episode of the 10? Uh, which is obviously not a spoiler. It's just telling people what episode you can't wait. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah, yeah. Like maybe five. Um, we do something really interesting in five. That there's like a really cool location um, and everybody looks beautiful. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I think I think five might be yeah. my, yeah. My, my favorite. I not think, spoiling too much. I think uh, one of my favorites is probably episode three because it's the first time that you s- wait actually i don't know if i can say that but <laughs> i'm not but, trying to get you in trouble i no, just no, you know what i mean but like it was it was it was wonderful we all got to work as an ensemble and it was it was really really awesome <laughs> yeah it was great yeah i would say for me and seven uh, yeah. I, because it, it's the time that we get to say J- jess gets to say i'm gonna do it i'm gonna blank Oh. It's, uh, oh, it's, uh, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna what do? What is she gonna do? <laughs> By the way, you, you know, once the uh, showrunner actually says something like that, you can now talk about it. I know, yeah. right? I have liberty. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I would say my favorite going going off of that is like seven and eight. I think those are very pivotal points in my character's decision making and like, and also just trusting herself. And that, that for me, that was. Well, one of my favorite things that I've learned about my character and how I applied it to myself. So I'm personally a finale guy. <laughs> <laughs> Ten is oh just insane. God. Yeah, I mean, I, I got. I mean, like, if if you stay along for the journey, Ten is the biggest payoff 
ever. Uh, yeah, I, I'm a I'm a finale guy. I gotta say, I'm yeah. always almost always a penultimate episode girl yeah. because I always feel like in the penultimate episode you're like you're setting up that world, yeah. and also in nine. I got to have three really rad action sequences. Oh, and yeah. Yeah, yeah, so for me, I was like, cause I had physically prepped a lot for the role and did like a lot of training. And um, so I got to like really just go like full steam ahead and nine, so nine, I'm team nine. Yeah, yeah. team nine. <laughs> so I'm sure Disney Plus is hoping this is gonna be a hit. And I'm curious when you go in to pitch the studio, how much are they sort of asking you, okay, so here's your plan for season one. Do, what is your, do you already have an idea for two and three if you get to make it? Or do they sort of say, let's just worry about one season at a time. Yeah, it's different now. Uh, it, they used to ask you what's season three, but they just we just pitched out the first season, and we uh, well, you know, we ended the movie with page forty-seven and had no idea what that was. So, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> well, we'll see how this. Works. <laughs> well, let me ask. Let me also ask this: How important is it that? each season maybe has its own treasure where there's like a resolution to the storyline so you can start again. Is that, is that something that for us it is, it's the 10 season, it's a 10 episode arc for one treasure. Each season is how we envision it. And um, we've already been, uh, you know, knock on wood, trying to think of what, what where we would go for season two, but um, knock on wood, we'll see you know, what happens, but it, you know, it's constantly swirling treasure. I'm also curious, obviously uh, Catherine Zeta Jones is Woo. a part of your show. Uh, she does not do that much TV. Um, she's pretty selective. So what was it like working with her and getting her on the series? Um, it was such a cool experience. Um, I grew up watching her and she's always been a big inspiration. And so it was an, it was another full circle moment, you know, but um, I don't know, just her energy on set was just so professional and she's so kind and, I, you know, even on my hard days, she would welcome me with open arms. So it was just it was just awesome, you know, to get to talk to her and learn about her life and get advice from her as an actress. Yeah. Yeah. She's got she's got an insane presence. Like you always want to bring your best when you're with her. You know, I mean, she's Hollywood royalty for sure. <laughs> like, yeah. As for getting her on the show. Uh, well, she was our first choice. Uh, we're huge fans of hers. And uh, and she read the pilot script and she was interested. So we got it on a Zoom and uh, Marianne pitched her her whole backstory. I pitched my heart out. And, <laughs> and we gave she, her, yeah, her whole family her, back. What, how the treasure is personally connected to her character. And she she liked it enough to say, yeah, OK, I'll, I'll do it. And we've been thrilled ever since we could pinch each other on the set every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's super like Hollywood royalty, but the nicest, most lovely person that you could ever meet. So I love learning about like the making of a show or the making of a movie. So um, I don't know if you'll be able to answer this, but let's give it a try. Is there anything soon to be fans of this series would be surprised to learn about the actual making of the series? I always freak out when we step on set and the sets are practical. Like yeah. we're not dealing with CGI or anything. We're, we're, we're dealing with a set that you can actually use and is functional. So everything you're seeing is, is, is kind of real. And that's kind of a dream for an actor to, we don't have to think so much about pretending. It's like we're actually doing it. That's like one of the fun yeah. things that I think the fans are going to love about this. One thing that was kind of cool about our show, this has never happened to me before. I don't know if it has for any of y'all. Um, we shot in Baton Rouge and our show is set in Baton Rouge. And that yeah. never happens. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you're always like shooting New York for somewhere else. And um, so I think if you're somebody who's from Baton Rouge, it'll be cool to be like, here's landmarks. Because yes. I know when oh, I watch yeah. a show and it's like shot in L.A., I'm like, there's Ventura Boulevard. Like, there's this place. <laughs> yeah. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty rare. Yeah, it was weird, like seeing our apartments in the back of some shops. <laughs> 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 it's like we were literally living right down the street and like walking to work. It was very cool. It was very an interesting situation to be like dropped in this in, in Baton Rouge and it's like summer camp and we all got to be best friends and like hang out with the crew, cast, everybody. Everyone was a big family. It was it was it was amazing. Yeah. A very hot summer. Very hot. Camp. Very hot. It got very yes. hot in the summer. Actually in my life, um the way that I have sweated in Baton Rouge, you know. Um yeah. I was going to say that the heat and humidity in Louisiana is no BS. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. And 
you know what? For the um, last two episodes, we film in, in a very, again, special location, but like out in the L Louisiana elements. Elements. <laughs> elements. <laughs> Wonderful word. Thank you, Lyndon Smith. Um, you know, so very, very real. I did a set visit in Louisiana, not to put myself in this at all, and I apologize, but um, where we were walking over this plank to get to the boat, and they said, seriously, don't fall in, there's alligators. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There were yeah. there were a few days where we had uh, you know al alligator wranglers and snake wranglers just on set, just to make sure everything was good, and I, we saw a few of them just tried to get in the shot, um, yeah. but luckily, you know, we didn't fall in the water. <laughs> That's another thing about the snake. Uh, I did a Maze Runner set visit, and the whole, uh, snakes in the grass yeah. they had people going out there to make sure that it's crazy there was this one time where i i swore i saw a snake and i kept going no i can't cross there i think i saw a snake people were like oh i don't know a snake wrangler was like i'll check he literally just jumps into the bush <laughs> yeah. and just starts like stabbing things and then all of a sudden he picks it up and everybody starts running they're like oh hell no like <laughs> not today i remember like normally you have like the neighborhood cat or the neighborhood dog and they're like oh yeah that's a neighborhood gator yeah it just comes around <laughs> yeah. sometimes it'll come up if you feed it and they're like oh word all right that's cool uh, and i don't know if anybody has um seen this if you're in baton rouge there's these grasshoppers that are no oh, joke like literally yeah. they're like six inches oh. long and they're black and they'll just fall on you yeah. and they would just fall on us during scenes and there was this one night apparently i took a stowaway home with me Whoa. and i got in the car to come back to work the next day and i looked over and in the passenger seat was a dinosaur no. of a grasshopper <laughs> and luckily i wasn't on the freeway but i was like what is this monstrosity <laughs> Yeah, they were everywhere. Yeah. I know that oftentimes casts that get along, and it seems like you guys do uh, form a text chain. So I'm curious, who is the one who texts too much all the time? Oh, definitely not me. It's not me either. I definitely have a text chain. Um, actually, we, we, we started one as soon as everyone was casted. It started with Lisette and then me, and, and then like it just grew, grew, and grew. Yeah. Um, but as far as an avid texter, I honestly can't. I think say, what do we think? We're all even. We just send a lot of pictures to each other, which yeah. is yeah. darling. My favorite yeah. thing is, you know, sending an invite in the group and then no one responding. And oh, then yeah. sending <laughs> a photo and then people be like, oh, love the pic. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah. Yeah, moment when nobody responds yeah 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 love you guys okay, silence thanks friends for being so supportive thank you um i definitely have to ask uh obviously nick cage is you know known for national treasure and i know you have harvey Keitel and justin and kath but I'm, I'm so curious what is the dream to have nick cameo at some point on the series Oh, yeah, the dream is absolutely, uh, you know, we wanted him to be featured in an episode this season, but his schedule just didn't work out. So the, the cameo, we'll still try to get him featured in an episode if we get a second season. And we, we're all about uh, Nick Cage. We we love him and we want him. And and uh, but if at the very least a cameo. One of the other things you mentioned, Louisiana, Baton Rouge, um, how much. When did you know early on in the writing process that Louisiana was going to be the place you guys were filming? And were you sort of writing to that? Because obviously Louisiana has great tax breaks. Georgia has tax breaks. We, you know, the, everyone knows if you don't know, tax breaks bring the production to a state. So I'm just curious, how did it end up with Louisiana? You know, we wanted Louisiana from a story standpoint from the beginning. We wanted we had told the story of the colonies and the Northeast and uh, the founding fathers. And we really wanted to go south, tell the story of the Spanish and the Mississippi River. We needed, we needed the Mississippi River. <laughs> yeah, we needed the Mississippi for the story. And um, so we always had intended um, on, on using Baton Rouge as Baton Rouge or NOLA as NOLA. We, but Baton Rouge ended up being a better choice for us for our story. Have you guys released when the show is actually coming out or it's just like this year? Um, Are we allowed? We're not allowed to say. <laughs> Soon. We're looking, yes. off, we're looking Soon. off cameras at, at people from the studio and they're all shaking their head. No. I'm like, do we even know? <laughs> can, can we say it's this year? I, I would I Streaming. Yeah. Streaming. Soon. Okay. Streaming. I'm going to I'm going to place a wager and you guys finished filming a few weeks ago. I'm going to say December. I'm going to say December, November, December is my guess, depending on how many VFX you have. That's definitely one of the months out of the year. I, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Put money on it. Yeah. Right. So talk a little bit, and I apologize for asking your showrunners another question, but talk a little bit about where you're at in the edit and in terms of what you've learned as you've been cutting uh, and you know what makes you really happy. 
Oh gosh, we've uh, we well, you've learned a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've learned a lot about the process, and we have incredible partners at JB TV and uh, Disney branded and. Um, uh, ABC uh, signature. We're learning so much in the process. We have seen uh, almost all the episodes. Uh, we've seen them all. We, yeah, we have uh, part mm -hmm. of 108. We haven't seen, but we've seen all the episodes. And we're always every day. We just we're so thankful for to our episodic directors and our amazing, amazing DPs. And also a shout out to our um, production designers because everything like you're saying looks incredible. Yeah. And, um, and somehow we got Trevor Rabin back to do the the music who did the music in the movies. So um, it's very exciting. So yeah, to see the score like on the show again, but like with a little Latin next <laughs> twist, um, it's just like, it's just, it makes us, it gives us chills. Yeah. I'm just about out of time with you guys, but we're at Comic-Con. And so for each of you guys, what is the thing that you sort of obsess over or geek out about? And is it here at Comic-Con? Oh, 100%. I mean, uh, <laughs> wait, we got we, we got a talker finally. Yeah. Oh, Here yeah. We go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, definitely. I mean, I'm going to go see all the Star Wars things. I'm going to go see all the Game of Thrones things, whatever. Uh, any of that stuff I'm going to freak out about. I would have literally cosplayed as either Anakin Skywalker from the third movie or Jon Snow. So if I were to have. So maybe tomorrow I will. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. I mean, basically... Growing up, I was always such a comic book and video game guy, and I still am. Um, so I just want to see all things nerd, basically. I just want to geek out as much as I possibly can. I have really no direction. I kind of just want to go tomorrow morning and just, I don't know, go to my feet hurt. That's basically my plan. I, I want to consume everything I possibly can down there. Yeah. I, I mean, even passing the costumes and seeing them go, I'm like, oh, God. Yeah. Will we have the time, man? Yeah. I want to see everything. Um, it's not a comic book, but I'm a massive Severance fan, like mm -hmm. massive. And um, I remember saying, oh, if I'm going to see this cast, I'm going to have to stop them. And then we came off from our panel and went into the green room. And it just so happened to be that Severance was on after oh, us. Ah, it was so and awesome. so I walked in and I was like, oh, this is incredible. <laughs> Ran right up to Britt Lauer and I was like, your performance um so i got to have my geeking out moment over them and i did like watch their panel on the the screen but yeah severance was a big like mm. good good see for me yeah yeah oh, dude, which one you want to anything marvel like i'm obsessed with but this is my first comic con this is all of our first yeah. comic con and i hear the art yep. is yeah. incredible so i really want to check those artists out and see if i can pick up anything yeah yeah, I, I second that. I love Marvel. Anything Marvel is my go-to. Um, but I'd also say Harry Potter. I'm, yes. a, I'm, a, I'm a big Potterhead. And then also Avatar, The Last Airbender. Yeah. I can yeah. recite the whole beginning Aww. of it, actually, by memory. So I feel pretty proud about that. <laughs> so they know I uh, just kind of learned what cosplay was yesterday. Um, so I, someone asked me what was my favorite movie growing up, um, and I said Tarzan. So if I had to choose a character, it would probably be Tarzan. I know that it's not here, but you know. Actually, it wouldn't surprise me if when you're walking on the convention floor, it's one of the booths has something Tarzan related. So there we go then. That's set up just for me. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Is there anything for you? You guys? know, I look. We. I wish I had dressed up as uh, Ripley from the Alien. I, I wish I. Had, we just we weren't prepared. We. But that would have been cool. Next time. I will say for you guys who have never been to Comic Con, uh, the best thing is to just be able to walk. It's first of all, it's massive, the convention floor. But the best thing is just start on one end and just walk up and down every aisle, and um, you'll find some of it is Hollywoodized. And some of it is real indie, and it's like a melting pot of everything. I think you guys will love it. And um, hopefully next year, as you come back, hopefully, uh, and you walk through, uh, you'll have to wear a mask. So people, will, you know, because of the show's popularity, <laughs> you know? I'm, I'm, anyway, look, I'm really looking forward to seeing your show. Thank you so much for coming by. Thank you so and much. Thank you. Good luck with the rest of your speed dating today. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Pleasure.